Good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Zahava Kurland. I am president of Beth Jacob Legacy Fund. We on the Legacy Fund board are very excited to present our first ever Beth Jacob Legacy Fund campaign. We created this campaign with two goals in mind. The first is to familiarize you with Legacy Fund's mission. Our mission is to create future financial security for Beth Jacob. Studies have shown that nonprofits will not be able to function on dues and donations alone to support their operations. Endowments will be the key in filling the financial gap. And we are very proud that the Legacy Fund has distributed $77,000 to support youth programming in just the past few years on $500,000 in assets. Imagine what that distribution could have been had we had $10 million in our fund. The second reason for this campaign is to provide important educational and planning services to you in creating the legacy you want to leave to your family and to your community. We often focus on what is in front of us now, leaving the most important issues to be pushed to some other day. Why? Because we can, and honestly, because these are tough issues to deal with. Unfortunately, they are often not addressed until it is too late, when, when we no longer have the luxury of time to consider all aspects of very complicated decisions. Our loved ones are left to pick up the pieces. This past year has certainly taught us how quickly the unexpected can happen at any age. We created this Legacy Fund campaign to present some of these critical life issues for your consideration now. And we encourage you to take action now. Please consider what a huge gift this will be to your family, to have thoroughly thought out and prepared for when you are no longer here to make those decisions about your estate and to know that it will be managed the way you want. Over the next few weeks, we will present a series on the mitzvah of tzedakah, which is this evening, advanced medical directives and halachic wills, the possibility of organ donation, and estate planning and wills. And now I am thrilled to present our first Zoominar on the eternity of tzedakah. Tonight's program is dedicated to the memory of Peyton Alexander, Pinchas ben Avraham, Zichron Olivracha. I'm honored to present our Rabbi Emeritus, Rabbi Emanuel Feldman, direct from Yerushalayim, and Rabbi D. Feldman, direct from here. I'm sure you will agree they need no introduction. Enjoy the presentation. Feldman, and I'm having the privilege of speaking with uh, the Rabbi Emeritus of Rashil, the father of Rashil. Happens to be Father's Day by coincidence, although in Yerushalayim, I have a feeling that uh, my father doesn't even know his Father's Day in Yerushalayim. Is that right? Well, 100% true. <laughs> okay, so welcome, Abba, and welcome, uh, Rabbi Feldman, Rabbi Emeritus of the synagogue and father of the show, so to speak. And uh, we're here today talking about the Legacy Fund, uh, which, as everybody knows, is a fund, it's an endowment fund that gives people an opportunity to, to uh, put the shul in their bequest. Um, so before we talk about, uh, directly talk about legacy, uh, just first of all, let me ask you a question. It may be seem, uh, seem obvious, but let me ask you a question. Why would you be interested in spending any time talking to the membership of our shul about legacy? Why is that your concern? You retired a long time ago. I retired physically from the job, but a, a Jew does not retire from his interest in the eternity of the Jewish people. And I think Beth Jacob has shown in his history that it's a vital cog in the chain of, of, of Judaism, going back uh, to Moshe Rabbeinu at Sinai and to Aram Avinu all the way to our day. So I'm interested not because uh, I'm interested as a person, but as a Jew, uh, I want to see all this to continue. And the Legacy Fund is a perfect means of guaranteeing this because it means that a person 
who makes a bequest in his will for his assets to continue to be working is actually continuing his own life in another form. So that's why I'm interested. Got it. Wow. Okay. So let's, uh, as the, the new word nowadays is unpack. Now let's unpack that. Um, so first of all, you know, one of the values of long range perspective, you know, and think about you leading the show from 1952, it's now 2021. It's amazing. It's another century. And it's literally more than well, more than a half a century from the time you got here. And I'm just thinking about people that you know in Yerushalayim who are in Yerushalayim leading a Jewish life because of what Beth Jacob stood for in the 1950s and the 1960s. Do you ever have that uh, perspective? You ever see, ever think about the long range effect of the show? Yeah, I, I see it every day because when I see our former Atlantans living here, as you say, living a Jewish life and their children and grandchildren living a Jewish life and primarily because of the impact that, that Beth Jacob had on their lives in Atlanta. It's a very, very, very uh, comforting feeling. Uh, but it's not only for the uh, Jews formerly of Atlanta who live in Jerusalem or Israel, but it's for Jews formerly of Atlanta who still live in Atlanta or who live somewhere else in the United States because um, Beth Jacob has had a tremendous influence on the lives of individuals as well as on the lives of the entire Jewish community of Atlanta. I mean, I don't want to dominate the, the conversation about going through all the things that Beth Jacob was responsible for in the city. Maybe during the course of our conversation, we can get into that. But sure, in answer to your question, yes, the, uh, the long-term impact of the shul is great is profound and it, it such an impact can be continued through the legacy fund got it so um suppose i am a donor to the show i'm a regular participant in various fundraising activities and i support the show i love the show i want to make sure the show does well financially why would uh being a participant in the legacy fund be something that I'd be interested in if I'm already donating regularly to the show? Well, I think the answer to that is that you can continue being already donating to the show <laughs> after you're physically gone from this earth. Your assets will continue working for the show. And that's why, that's how you really guarantee for yourself a sort of eternity of your life. It goes on giving even after you're no longer able physically to give, but spiritually and actually physically, you're continuing to give. Yeah, I, I hear that. And um, the, the uh, what about the fact that any money that I give Beth Jacob in, in a will ends up not going to my heirs? What about the impact on my heirs? I think it has a, that's a good question. I think it has a positive impact on the heirs because it teaches them uh, also to do similar things when their time comes. So it's a, it's an ongoing process of education of, of how to handle your assets, that it's not all yours. Some of your assets belong to God. That's why we have tithing. That's why we give 10% of our income to charity in, in lifetime. And that's why, I think this has this has a tremendously positive impact on one's heirs. If a person, let's say, uh, gives fifty thousand dollars in his will to the shul, sure, on one level, it's fifty thousand dollars less that his heirs will get, but it's it's much more than fifty thousand dollars worth that his heirs get in a spiritual sense, in terms of education and an inspiration for them and for their children. So I, you mentioned the educating one's children. So are you implying that it is possible to send a message of value to adult children? It's possible that one's heirs can be 50, 60, 70 years old. Uh, if if uh, people should live to 120, 
their heirs could be themselves subject to the bracha of you should live to 120. Um, is it possible to educate and send a message of value that will make a difference to senior children, senior adult children? I'm not sure I understand the question. Would you what, mind? what I'm saying is, and as you talked about the educational value of the message sent to children when they find that the um, that their uh, parent has included the synagogue in their in the, in the will. So is it, is it really realistic that older children will actually still get some inspiration or education? Are older children already not fixed and 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 uh, primed with their own orientation? Is there a, still a message that, that the I think children... it's a great message for, for a person, let's say, is 60, 70 years old and is beginning to write his will and think about the future and his bequests in that will. It's a tremendously important message to him to do the same thing that his parents are doing because uh, this is what keeps the line going. It keeps the chain going. It's not, if it ends just with, with, with my will and then my children don't have the similar will, then the chain is cut down. So that's where I think it's educationally very vital. I hear you. So suppose I am a person who was a member of the synagogue for 30 years, 20 years, some decent amount of time, and my children have grown up and they're out of town, um, or they're members of another synagogue, or they're not Orthodox, um, and they're no longer affiliated with the synagogue. Why would it be, would, would you think that it would still be an appropriate gesture to include Beth Jacob in your will, even though your own children will not be benefiting from Beth Jacob? Well, I think uh, it, it, it is extremely appropriate whether or not your children are, are, are following your paths or directly because Beth Jacob is, has an impact, a wide impact on the community at large. If you're interested in Judaism, which you are because you became a member of Beth Shoal and you were, you were here for a long time, you obviously care about the future of the Jewish people and, and Judaism as a, as a way of life, then this is going to guarantee the way of life for hundreds and maybe thousands of children down the line, far transcending your own personal children. So I think it, it, it applies to people who who, whose children following their paths or even whose children is not following their paths or for those who don't have any children at all, it still applies. You keep the message of the shul alive and vibrant and, and going. You know, uh, as you were talking, I just thought my, my own question prompted me to think of something that I didn't even have in mind when I, when I asked you the question, but you'll be happy to know, and I won't get into names right here, obviously it's not appropriate, but, um, there is a young 20-ish uh, couple, uh, mem active members of our shul, uh, the husband of, who, uh, of, of the couple comes to Minyan every single day, married to the granddaughter of a longtime member of the shul who passed away uh, only about a year or so ago. And one of the things that this grandfather, before he passed away, confided in me was, it really bothers him that none of his children are members of the synagogue. And now his granddaughter is a member of the synagogue and an active participant in the show's life. Uh, the show was here for her and her husband to be able to come to. Nobody could have planned that or guessed that. God only could have planned that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Forgot about him for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a personal question, and I, I'm not looking for anything that reflects on me at all. But um, you, um, for all means and purposes, are, as I said before, like the father of the synagogue. And you not only fathered the synagogue, but you nurtured it together with mom for, for almost 40 full years. And uh, obviously, your impact lasts beyond that as well, uh, if, if merely the fact that your son uh, has many of your instincts um, and in, in, in guiding the show. 
but what is it like, really? What is it like um, uh, seeing your own legacy? I know it's a crazy question coming from me, for your son. I'm not looking for anything about me. But what is it like seeing your legacy in your lifetime, seeing something that you left over uh, making a difference for the show? Well, the truth is, I never look at it that way. That you know, that the show's growth and and and, and uh, influence is a is a result of my efforts. But if, as you say, there is something to it, it certainly there's a source of great satisfaction. Uh, I have great satisfaction when I come back from my occasional visits to Atlanta and see the the tremendous variety of things that the Shul is doing in terms of bringing. Torah and God and Yiddishkeit to the community. So sure, there's tremendous satisfaction in that, not even mentioning the fact that our son is the rabbi and carrying on very, very well. Um, although I do notice that my son became gray in his beard long before I became gray in my beard. It took me into, into the well into my 80s and my son is just in his 60s and is already gray, which means he's working much harder than I did when I was rabbi. <laughs> no, just me. It means I strive to emulate you. <laughs> yeah, sooner, sooner. You got ahead you. of me. <laughs> yeah. anyway, very good. Um, I, I, I want to share with you, uh, just in terms of legacy and in terms of, uh, you know, the impact of the show and, and the, the inability to calculate its impact, a colleague of mine took a vacation and came here to Atlanta for Shabbos this past weekend, uh, insisted that I not welcome him, uh, you know, from the pulpit. He just wanted to sit in the back and enjoy himself. And he's known me for a number of years. As a matter of fact, he's invited me to speak in his shul in another city. And um, he told me last night as we're leaving shul after Shabbos was over, he said, I had absolutely no idea what this synagogue is. Um, he said, it, your, your membership has to be proud. They've put up a facility which is second to none in the country. Uh, they have a vibrancy and an energy which is just uh, rare to find in synagogues. And I always knew that Beth Jacob was, was a strong synagogue, but I had no idea. He, and he said, I don't, he said to me, I don't think you know what is going on here. My response to him is, was, First of all, thank you very much. And yes, it is very special. And I'm just, I'm inspired every time I walk into this building and interact with my members. But I said to him, this is still post COVID. We're not even running on full cylinders yet. We don't have all of our precious members back and we haven't run all of our activities for youth, for older people. Um, and, uh, uh, and so this, so I really take what, what he said, uh, you know, very seriously. Um, people from outside see this show. So I'm one of our, our listening audience right now uh, to, to know that um, you may be accustomed to Beth Jacob, but out there in the world, it, it, and it, it is appreciated and it is valued. It is not a typical show. That's beautiful, especially true, especially from my own perspective, when I recall the shul I walked into in August 1952, <laughs> which was just a remodeled house downtown near the Georgia Baptist Hospital on Boulevard, and just a house with barely a minion on Shabbos, much less weekdays. And to think of what occurred uh, in the intervening uh, decades and to see what is there now, then you know, a person doesn't believe in God, that would make a believer out of them. <laughs> because it's far beyond the work of any individual or, or, or any couple. It had to do with the, the creator of the world reaching down to us and guiding us in every step of the way. It's an amazing thing uh, that you look, that this person who visited you on Shabbos he had an insight to see this, and everyone sees it except ourselves, because we're right on, right on top of it and we see it. We should, it's something we should be very proud of, and that's why the Legacy Fund is so crucial, because it, uh, it guarantees 
that all this beautiful, miraculous growth will continue down into the future. Uh, if it, I mean, truth is, if a person is looking for investment, or was looking for return on investment, um, both on a, <clears throat> a global sense, as well as on uh, one individual after another sense, um, there's, there's literally no calculating the long range impact of supporting the show in terms of what's going to happen in the community and what's going to happen with in lives, individual lives, in marriages, in child raising, in, in uh, prayer, in, in communion, so to speak, with, with Hashem. The, uh, it's incalculable. So really, just if you're just looking for investment value, Beth Jacob Legacy Fund is it. For sure. As a matter of fact, uh, you're probably yourself not aware of this, but I get feedback on a totally different level from people who uh, are awed and, and totally inspired by the way Beth Jacob handled the pandemic, mm -hmm. by the regular instructions that the show sent out, that you sent out, that the president sent out, that people very much appreciate being kept informed and knowing that there were people in the shul, the rabbi, and, and his other rabbis and, and the lay leadership who were in charge of things and had their pulse on things and kept things moving. I hear this from different people uh, who, who contact me over the, over, over the last year or so. So there's another, another uh, medal that, that Jacob earned in the eyes of the community at large, the way that Jacob handled itself during this very, very critical and challenging year. So to everyone for that. Yeah, well, thanks for bringing that up. I will mention, and not just to, uh, so to speak, uh, return the compliment or, or bat it back to somebody else. It happens to be that our membership displayed a form of respectful discipline regarding their Jewish behavior and their interaction with each other and their observance of Yom Tov, uh, et cetera, and their having or not having minyanim uh, in their backyards, and coming to the shul and davening in the parking lot, et cetera, following the, the uh, guidelines. There was a tremendous amount of, of what I call respectful discipline. And that's because our shul is a community and we actually feel responsible for each other. And I think that that's something that Beth Jacob from uh, way back has established that it stands not only yeah. for a place of prayer, but also for a community. The idea that we have standards that we maintain and strengthen each other. And so you bring that the, the, the pandemic up and it, it really, it really helped underline that even when the shul was closed, the shul was not closed. The building was closed and no one entered it for three or four months. And the show was wide open and having impact even during that time. An amazing thing. And that's, that's another reason why the legacy fund is so crucial. We're running out of time, but I want to mention one sort of amusing thing. You mentioned uh, the, the backyard minyanim. I was here in Yerushalayim. <laughs> every other house was a backyard minion during the pandemic. A couple of them are still running because they like the atmosphere of the tents and so forth. There was one particular backyard minion that I attended that was last summer and the winter was coming and we didn't know what was happening. And, and the, the leadership of that congregation, it's not a congregation, the leadership of that group decided they want to really make something a little more permanent about that backyard. So they built uh, wooden walls, they had brought a contractor in and they, uh, uh, someone made a, a roof in case it's going to rain during the winter, which it did, they put in heaters and so forth, and they were trying to raise money. So the leader of the group called me all night, he says, I'd like you to, to me, he says, I want you to be in the building committee. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I said, you know, I retired from all that. He says, oh, we need to have your expertise. So I joined the building committee of this tent minion and we built a beautiful little place. And now that the Baruch Hashem, the pandemic is over, I told the committee, I said, we ought to put in some bathrooms and some bedrooms and we can rent it out and make some money. 
for Sudoka. But anyway, that was an a, a, a interesting uh, uh, aspect to my retirement here in Jerusalem of serving on a building committee all over again. Anyway, it's been, <laughs> been great talking with you, Rabbi. And uh, the final word is that this, the Legacy Fund is a very serious thing, a serious project for everyone at Beth Jacob to consider, no matter even a small amount, but a certain amount from every bequest, from every will should be bequested to the shul in order to keep up the things that we have had going for the last many, many years. Amen. And uh, that last story uh, with the, the building fund says that good rabbis never retire. They just go on to other building funds. And they don't fade away. <laughs> they don't fade away. Well, as, as evidenced by your helping and uh, providing us some leadership here on this very important uh, uh, ongoing initiative of the Beth Jacob Legacy Fund. Thank you very much for making time for us and for inspiring us once again. My pleasure, my pleasure. Shalom from Yerushalayim, Ir HaKodesh. Thank you very much. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> Rhoda Gleischer is uh, on the chat asking, where do we begin? So tonight <laughs> the answer is always going to be Legacy fund. That's where we <laughs> begin. But I wrote, I know what you're asking. And I, uh, I'm so glad you were able to participate. Rhoda has been like, you know, I remember Rhoda when she was a teenager in NCSY. So uh, Rhoda certainly knows the whole story. And I bet from the past, Rhoda, you can predict the future because uh, you've seen it. You've seen it all. But if that question was on a practical level, um, there's a few ways to begin. There's a form on the Legacy Fund website, just very short form, name, email, phone number um, that you can click on to fill out and someone will be in touch with you to follow up and answer whatever your specific questions are. You can also reach out to Zahava Curlin directly or any of us on the board. That's Marsha Straczynski, Zahava Curlin, Arnie Schneider, Len Epstein, Paul Shank, Ruth Goldstein, you can also speak to Matt Lewis and he'll direct you with more information. Thank you for that. Uh, the Legacy Fund, uh, the, the, the web, web page, is that's separate from the Beth Jacob web page, is it not? Correct. We're going to link the current page to the new one, but it's very simple. It's BethJacobLegacyFund.org. So after today, even if you go to the one on our web page, it'll redirect you. Great. Thank you, Rhoda, for that question. Anybody else? And Marsha, Marsha Robkin wrote in the chat, Rabbi Falman, that she remembers, well, actually, I think this is for Rabbi Manuel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she remembers that day in 1952. I don't think you were there. Yeah, no. I was I, one year old. <laughs> yeah. This is Alan Shaw. Thank you for the evening. It was a pleasure to listen to you and uh, Rabbi Emanuel. It's good that you all are well and... Uh, Thank you for everything you've done for my family. Thank you. That's a very kind and generous, Alan. It's really, a, it's always a pleasure when we get on Zoom and find you and your wife right there. It's really great. Thanks for being part of it. And thanks for being along for the ride. Um, and may you continue to be blessed with, with, uh, with health and long years. Thank you. And have a good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Do you want to wrap up? Yes, indeed. We hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation and we hope you got a lot out of it. We did. Please join us for the next three Zoominars on very important matters and you'll be getting email reminders. And also you just mentioned, check out our new website. It is really rather beautiful. <laughs> um, so without anything else, have a great evening and a wonderful and holy Shabbos to all of you. Thank you.